Hello again, this is Ryan Walmer, technical advocate here at ProWorks, and today we're going to talk about backup and restore for Kubernetes applications. And I'm not talking about specifically just the data of an application, but everything involved with what an application is on Kubernetes. So this is all the YAML and secrets and, and, and everything that makes up what an application is on top of a PVC um, and the data that's in that application, say if it's a database or a stateful application. So let's dive in. Here we have two different Kubernetes clusters. Both the UIs are available. You can see the one just has the demo namespace, which will be interacting with our application out of here initially. You can see the second one here and the terminal doesn't have it as well. So in that demo namespace, we have a MySQL database, right? So this MySQL database has a volume backed by Portworks and um, has data inside of it. So we're gonna go check out the data that we're gonna be working with to verify our tests or backup. So here we're gonna go into the pets database and uh, look, we have one record about a dog, Roscoe. And this is the data that we're gonna use to verify um, our backups and restores uh, since it's simple and easy to use. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a backup location, right? Where do we back up to? In this case, I'm using an S3 compliant bucket called KS Backup Supportworks. And the secret is how to access it and syncing it, make sure that um, any new cluster that uses this location can sync whatever backups are there. Now, once that's created, the next thing we're gonna need is an application backup. So this is specifically targeting the application we're talking about. So we sel use selectors here, app MySQL. Uh, we also provide a rule that flushes the database. Uh, we can get into that more in a different demo, but we go ahead and create that. And this actually kicks off that backup to our backup location. So if we look here, we can see the status of what's going on. And it first backups the volumes and it stays in progress during this time until it backups the volume and the data obviously within that volume, then it moves on to applications and finishes up, right? So this is Kubernetes resources plus data, uh, the whole application. Now that we have our backup there, we can add a schedule if we want, right? So that was a single backup, but we can add a policy here um, and we tie that policy to what's called a application backup schedule. So here you can see it references the policy and this will essentially do the same thing we just did, except make sure it backs up on whatever, you know, schedule policy you want. And that could be every 10 minutes, half hour, certain days of the week, et cetera. And they'll be labeled with backup schedule interval and a timestamp. Uh, that's the only difference. So now that we have some backups going, uh, we're going to add some data, right, so that we can restore and make sure that we restore to our original data that we had. So let's go back into the database and we add another dog to our uh, database. So we have two rows here. Now, our original backup we took just had the one row. So now we're going to talk about how to restore that. What you need first is an application restore object, which targets a backup name and a backup location. Once that is created, this will kick off a restore. And what you'll see here is the same kind of progress uh, that we saw before, except the difference is we told our reclaim policy to be delete. So what it does is it replaces it by deleting it and uh, creating the new resources underneath. So it replaces the PVC, restarts the container, and brings your application back up. And that's what you just saw here on the left. You can see that it's just been created. So now if we go back into the MySQL container, we should see the original data that we started with because we restored to this point in time. Here we can see we have our one row back. So that restore worked just fine. Now, it's not always uh, nice to replace that application. So we can use an application clone, which does a similar thing, but clones that uh, application to another namespace uh, based on the point in time. So once we've created that clone, we've targeted uh, the clone MySQL namespace. So here we can see that 
it's in the final and success stage. If we go to our UI and go to the clone MySQL namespace, we can see MySQL is up and running. And we've successfully cloned. Now, in the other cluster, we have to go ahead and create the demo namespace because that's where it'll live. We'll go ahead and create the backup secret, the same backup location, uh, because we're going to be backing up from our backups that are already in that bucket. Right. So if we remember, we had sync equals true here. So what's important to know about this is that we should see our backups because it's going to sync what it already knows. Uh, it might take a second, but if we watch here, there they are. And those are our two backups. Note they do have timestamps so that names, names don't overlap. So we're going to target that MySQL backup, the first one we took. Um, and again, we just created the demo namespace. The MySQL container doesn't exist in this cluster. You know, uh, it could be a, a demo or a dev names uh, cluster that you're using. And we create this application restore and target that backup name. That's the only difference that is needed here. And we go ahead and create that object and the restore will kick off and bring MySQL into the demo namespace here. So if we look at the overview and just kind of refresh as the restore occurs, we should see uh, once the PVC is up and the restore says final, we can see our MySQL container, the replica sets, the PVC is all available in our second cluster. So this is backing up and restoring to a second cluster. And we can verify the data that's in there as well, just as we did in the first cluster. Um, by going into the cluster and accessing the database. So here, if we access pets and select our rows, we see that our first row, which is our first backup, right? We just want this piece of data. So this is backing up and restoring. So now you have three copies of this point in time backup to work with, whether that's dev and test, et cetera, in two separate clusters um, using the application backup procedures available from Portworx Enterprise. Hopefully that was interesting and stay tuned for more. Thank you very much.